A lot of people say, oh, let the worst case scenario thing happen to you. You'll learn it's not that bad. Not true. It was really bad and I contemplated quitting comedy. I was asked to be a part of a reality show stand-up comedy competition that's like Last Comic Standing, but not good. It was still like a very big deal for me because there was gonna be like celebrity judges, cameras, 250 people there, which is the most people that had ever come to see me up to this point. And I decided I was gonna start my set with a joke that involved music. So I would come out, the song would be playing, and I would be dancing. And I think you guys can put the song in post. You get, is that, okay. I fake do like a line of coke, and then I go up to like a girl and I go, hey, what's up, what's your name? Yeah, you party? Cool, cool, cool. And then I cut the music and I say, that was my impression of my brother. It always does well. The only person that doesn't like it is my brother, but that's not gonna stop me from telling the joke. So I get to the comedy club and I should have known that something bad was gonna happen because like you walk down this hallway when you first come in and there's all these pictures of famous comedians who have performed at the club. And it's like Ronnie Dangerfield, Gary Shandling, Jerry Seinfeld, Chris Rock, Sarah Silverman. And then where there should be like a picture of like a younger comedian, there's just a hole in the wall where it seems like someone just got drunk and just like punched a hole in the wall. And I go to the sound guy and I tell him, hey, I'm gonna come out to this song, I'm gonna do this crazy dance, and then I'll give you a cue to cut the music. And he looks at me like he hates me because like all sound people, he's mad that someone is asking him to do the job he was being paid to do, but he assures me that he's gonna do it. So my time comes to perform, I come out, no music playing. So I look to the sound booth to try and like cue the sound guy, not in the booth. So what I should have done in this situation was I should have just walked to the mic and told a different joke. But for some reason, my brain said, commit harder. So I flail to absolute silence. Nobody is laughing. And then this woman who definitely has a like, let me talk to your manager haircut says, what are you doing? It doesn't even count as a heckle. It was just so sincere and said at a volume of like, what are you doing? Like a genuine inquiry. So I decide to ignore her and then I say, oh, that was my impression of my brother. No laughter. And then for some reason, I decide to go into my weirdest joke after 45 seconds of no laughs. Sting! Sting! I just wrote the next great American novel. That was my impression of F. Scott Fitzgerald. That's the joke I decided to tell next. <laughs> no laughter. And then the woman goes, what is happening? So now I feel like I have to address her. And so I go, I'm telling jokes. And then she goes, are you? Huge laugh from the crowd. It's like this was the moment they've been waiting for it. And then she says, but I probably shouldn't be talking to you right now, right? Because isn't this a film thing where like new comics are trying to make a name for themselves in the industry? And I said, yeah, Petunia, and you're ruining it for me. And then she goes, sorry. And then another huge laugh from everybody else. And then I finish my set. We go over to the panel of celebrity judges. One of the judges goes, that was funny, but I really would not have started with that dancing. Another judge says, that heckler was funnier than you. And that's the story of the worst case scenario. And a lot of people say, oh, let the worst case scenario thing happen to you. You'll learn it's not that bad. Not true. It was really bad. And I contemplated quitting comedy for weeks after that. Months, maybe even. I'm definitely, I think, now more successful than that guy who said that heckler was funnier than me. So fuck you, Vic.